My name is Jessica Rosen and I'm going to be talking to you today a little bit about sort of girls in physics, you know, what are the problems, why should we bother, what the Institute of Physics is doing at the moment and what you can be doing when you go starting your schools in September. Okay, so first of all the issues. So what we have, what we currently see is that um, nationwide girls are doing pretty good in physics. In fact, they're probably last year, they were sort of mildly outdoing the boys, so at GCSE level. However, about 20% of A-level physics students are girls, which is quite low. And not only that, it's been about 20% for the last 20 years. So we've really seen this as quite a stagnant issue. Physics is the second most popular subject with boys, but it's about the 17th with girls. So you can see that there is something going on now. Why are girls succeeding at GCSE and then just opting out when it comes to A-level? Well, um, some recent research found out that about 49% of mixed state schools aren't sending any girls on to do physics A-level. So they're sending on boys, but there's just no, no take-up in those schools of, physics go uh, of girls going on to do physics. Um, the problem is most acute, state-maintained mixed schools. So there's a little bit of an issue there. Um, some people might just say, well, girls, girls, girls don't like physics. I and um, the Institute of Physics, we would disagree there. We think that there's something else going on. So recent research has shown that some of the main influences on girls uh, or on students' attitudes to physics are found to be self-concepts, how, how people feel in relation to the subjects, how students experience their physics at school, and their teacher-student relationships. So as budding NQTs, kind of, I'm sure you're going to be doing a great job of encouraging everyone that physics is brilliant. Yeah. So you're going in there next year, enthusiastic, ready to take them all by storm. So I think that's probably going to be fine. You're also going to be brilliant in those teacher-student relationships, aren't you? You're going to be, you know how to relate to students. You'll be learning all about that this year. Um, what? Obviously, uh, students need good, strong teacher-student relationships. They also need their teachers to be open-minded to make sure that their teachers don't have any unconscious bias about whether they think girls or boys are better at physics and so on. So I'll talk a little bit more about that later. A thorny issue, self-concept. What is going on there? No quick fixes with this, I'm afraid. Let's look at this one in a little bit more detail. OK, so self-concept. Uh, when we talk about the self-concept, we kind of see, do people and do girls think physics is something that they can get interested in? If you do a Google search for biologists, you come up with this. This looks exciting, doesn't it? Look at all these people, they're doing stuff, girls, boys, uh, all kinds of people doing this. Uh, chemists, similar kind of thing, white coats, explosions, yeah, I could get into that. Physicist. <laughs> There is something going on there, isn't it? Everyone looks a bit white, pale and stale, don't they? There is, there, there is, if you're a young 15-year-old girl looking at this, you'd be like, that's, that's not for me, would you, really? Um, so, yeah, so we need to be making sure that physics is taught, uh, that it's relevant to girls, and that they can see themselves kind of, um, you know, getting excited about physics as they're growing up. Um, another thing with girls, again, there's no sort of uh, short answer to this, but girls and boys are possibly treated, well, no, let's, let's go one step back. So what you will find is that girls tend to be a lot less confident in boys, particularly kind of, um, you'll find sort of in physics and maths, you're, 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 they're, they're, they're a lot more kind of uh, almost too self-aware. Boys will be very confident, they'll go forth, they'll kind of, they'll just have a go, whereas girls will hold back a little bit. Um, this could be a little bit to do with kind of how they're treated as they're growing up. Um, so they're a little bit more risk averse, kind of. If, you sit, if a boy goes and kind of does something crazy, a little bit scary, they're like, oh, yeah, good for you. Whereas kind of with girls, people are a little bit more sort of, are you sure? To, you know, take care. You know, they're taught and maybe a little bit to be, that's, that's a theory. It's that nothing's, we've got no evidence about that yet, but it's something we're looking at. So um, as to what the Institute is doing, we are doing research in this area. There is no hard and fast rules um, at the moment. What we are looking at is going back and trying to improve um, self-confidence. Um, we are working with a number of schools. Um, we are working with four schools, working with girls, trying to improve their self-confidence. 
Um, we are working with four schools, trying to work with teachers, improve how they teach physics. And we're working with four schools, looking at improving the overall um, environment to make sure that there's an overall set of gender balance, that there's no set of stereotyping going on there. So we're doing lots of activities in a number of different schools, trying to get some evidence to why we think that girls are uh, selecting themselves out of physics. Why, why, you know, why are they opting out? Um, what we have found so far is parents play a key role. Um, so when you go in next year, do make sure, you know, engage with parents. Um, they, this graph up here is quite horrifying. What this is, is uh, parents' responses to the question, what type of job would you like your child to pursue when they finish their education? So the red is the sons and the grey is the daughters. You can see there quite clearly, there's quite a bias. Sons, engineering, uh, daughters, teaching, uh, nursing, fashion design, hair, that kind of thing. So education of parents is just as important as education of students. And careers education as well, we have found, is sadly looking in a lot of schools at the moment. And they are very thirsty for anything you can do to help with sort of uh, careers education. Um, so what we're finding with the schools that we've been working so far, we are finding we're, we're, we're succeeding in some of our things. We're, girls are becoming more confident. Teachers are changing their practice. They're, they're becoming more engaging. Staff and students are reporting a reduction in gendered language and improved careers provision. But what we are finding, we are working a lot with year 9 and 10 students at the moment. And a lot of the feedback we're getting is actually kind of, we're not making a big difference in them turning on to physics. What we need to be doing is addressing the issues lower down the school. What people find the problem is this issue crops up year 9 and 10, so we've tried to fix it year 9 and 10. We need to be working with year 7 and 8, going then into year 9, year 10, and so on. So it's very still quite early days with this project, but it, do you kind of watch this space. Um, it is mentioned in the classroom physics. There's some copies you can uh, pick up on your way out, and there's uh, some more set of details um, in this article um, on page 5. So anyway, this conference is all about what you can do going into your classrooms next year. So a key thing is be aware. Do you have any unconscious bias? Have you kind of um, uh, put your hands up? Has anyone heard of the term unconscious bias? OK, excellent. That's really good to see quite a few of you, uh, quite a lot of you putting your hands up. So have you, uh, you know, Unconscious bias is a lot about kind of just picking up references from TV, from society at large, and making that kind of connection in your subconscious kind of. Do you think girls are less able in um, particular subjects and so on? So be aware, it's not bad to have an unconscious bias, but it's all about how you manage your unconscious bias. Monitor your classroom. Are your lessons engaging everyone? Is your environment inclusive? Engage with the teachers. They may not be as aware as you. So if they are kind of having gender sort of biased conversations in the classroom about people making comments, do sort of stop them, go, oh, you know, hang on there. Engage with them. Engage with parents and link to careers as much as possible. So that's what you can be doing initially, September, straight away. As you kind of you'll become more established in your schools, there's a lot more you can be doing. So there is, a, there is going to be a lot of emphasis coming in Ofsted's kind of in um, future years, I think, about in terms of gender balance. Do audit your school in terms of gender balance. If you're looking to redress, uh, redress gender imbalance, let people know. Start the debate going. You know, try and get those unconscious biases coming out so people know and get them discussing it. Does your school policy, it's, I'm pretty sure every school's got a policy on racist, racism and racist language. Do they have one on sort of gender equality? Consider the impact of one-off events versus a larger, well, not a larger, regular, more regular, smaller, manageable chunks. So it's great sending all your girls off once a year to kind of do some activity at university, but actually just drip feeding it into your lessons, into schemes of work, will have a much longer and more lasting change. Group activities really sort of lend themselves to kind of um, for girls making the most out of your lessons. 
Explore unconscious bias, there's a lot of links in this newsletter, and do try and embed it into your school practice wherever possible. Okay, I do appreciate that, kind of the our whole day is running over a little bit, so I will step down now. Um, I will be around at the end if anyone's got any questions, but I think we're keen to sort of wrap up the whole sessions. Congratulations on finishing your PGCE. You've got a whole year of uh, exciting things going on. It will be challenging, but you'll find yourself growing a lot over the next year as well. And with that, I will hand over to Chris. Hello, Chris. Mm.